sit behind the ducks, perhaps. That, that's a little inspiration. No doubt about that. Brandon Roy, step back on Iguodala, hits. Well, the young guys have shown a little spunk tonight in Brandon Roy and Sergio Rodriguez. Brandon, 13 points in this ball game, five rebounds as well. I tell you, the young guys never give up. They, they're out there. Lamarcus Aldridge is trying his heart out. But this guy right here, Andre Miller. Kevin Ollie can't finish. And the rebound, you go for Martel Webster thought about the three, then flips it in. Boy, he had a look away at Juan Dixon. It's a five point game with 36 seconds left. They're going to have to foul now. And they foul Andre Miller, who yeah. will give you one on occasion. Sure. He's five for seven tonight. Sure. Anything can happen in the NBA game. Blazers, I think they have 120 left. And so. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to dip into the three-point shot rather than trying to get quick twos and foul. They're going to have to go for three. So Juan Dixon, that's why he is in the game, along with Martel Webster. Miller misses. Yeah, he'll he'll give you a, a few. Again tomorrow night, Blazers at Utah. We'll have that for you on KGW Northwest News Channel 8 here in the Portland area and on the Trailblazers Television Network. Beginning at 5.30 Pacific time with Northwest Chevy Home Court, the pregame show. And Miller makes one of two, and Portland uses its final 20-second timeout. But it saves six or seven seconds getting to half court. I believe they, you know, that is their final 20-second timeout. Andre Miller tonight, we mentioned... You know, he was the key piece in the Allen Iverson trade, Mike Rice. And uh, even though Philadelphia is 7 and 21, this is clearly the first time they've really got a run. It takes a couple of games to get up to speed, and Miller clearly is now. Yeah, he's got a great feel for getting into the lane. He's a strong point guard that can play some defense. He averages nine assists, so he knows how to pass the ball. I think Maurice Cheeks will love sleep better with this guy running the team. He has never had. He had Sebastian Telfair. He had Damon Stoudemire. He had uh, Iverson. He's had all shooters. Guys that fought shoot first. And his offense, Mochik's offense, wants the point guard to pass the ball. That's why he's had so many too much trouble staying in tune with point guards. Andre Miller. Oh. He looks like an all-star tonight. When they run the numbers and try to pick who the best point guards are in the NBA, Andre Miller always near the top of the list. Martell hit the three and was knocked down by Korver. No foul call, and then Miller is fouled again. It's a two-point game, three-point game, excuse me, one possession game with 27.8 left. Boy, Martell Webster hit that a step behind the line. Yeah, now. And Corver ran him over as well. That could have easily been a four-point play. Yeah, uh, that would have been really good if it was, simply because the Blazers had no timeouts. So uh, they tried to set up Martel Webster for the three. Got a nice pick from Zach. Made the shot. It would have been a super four-point play. Maybe if they'd had a third referee, they'd have seen it. Oh! Miller misses the free throw. Well, and Ron Elisiak, our third official tonight, left with a knee injury, we understand. Moe's at the bow over on the bench. Looks a little nervous. The crowd has got the clappers going. Missed a pair. Randolph with it. No timeouts. Watch Martell. they got to look for Martell. Brandon Roy. Brandon wants to take the two, goes inside, up and under move, scores. Not a bad idea by Roy. He's got 15. And timeout Philadelphia. 16.5 left. It's a one-point game. 
Well, this is reminiscent of the game in Philadelphia that the Blazers couldn't close out and now, finally did win. Yeah, now see, they're out on the shooters. So look at Corver over in the corner. All They're staying on all the three-point shooters. That young man, Brandon Roy, looked like a 10-year veteran right there. He knew he couldn't hit the three-point shooters, so he goes inside and gets the quick two, and they're going to come up with another foul, probably on Andre Miller again. But if I were Mo Cheeks, I would not give the ball to Andre Miller, their best ball handler, but not their best foul shooter. So right now, Mo Cheeks has to make a big decision on who to give the inbounds pass to. Blazers have to foul. They have no timeouts. They have to foul immediately. They can't even wait for one second. Right now, get the ball in the hands of a guy named Brandon Roy. And you talk about devastating. Oh. oh, this would be a devastating loss for the 76ers if they fail to close here with the way they have played. They in would the second half. But you see the Blazers here in the final couple of minutes on a 9-1 run. Yeah, they feel like Missouri feels tonight. They may. They may. <laughs> Blazers hanging in there with some young guys. Wouldn't that be fitting? A big comeback. Yeah. On the football yeah. field today and here at the Rose Garden tonight if it can happen. And Nate McMillan just kept looking for people on the bench. Who can I go to? What combination will hit? Well, finally, he's found a group that's 9-1 to run right now. Uh, Kyle Korver shoots 92%. That's the guy you don't want to foul if you're Portland. And Andre Miller, the guy who is... They should double-team. Zach shouldn't play the ball. He should go play Korver right now. Keep him from getting the ball. Kevin Ollie is 84%. Yeah, yeah. Regardless of what happens, Portland, you would think, will get a chance to at least tie the game. I wouldn't even check Henderson. They're trying to get it to Corver. They have to go in the backcourt to Ollie. Got a foul. Roy tries, and it does foul. The foul's going to be on Ollie. It's going to be Ollie shooting. Maurice Cheeks stomps his foot. He wanted Corver at the. Oh, yeah. Why did Corver give it up? But Blazers were wise. They didn't foul him right away. Now, they wasted some time, but if. If Kyle Korver gets on the line, I mean, that's that lead right there goes up to three points. Only first trip to the line, 84% on the season. Now, Martell's got to be aware of a long bounce. They've got to get the rebound. Oh. And Ollie hits the first. Now the Blazers are going to have to show something here. There's no timeouts left. If he hits, does Cheeks foul for possession? He never used to. No, he won't He do missed. It. Randolph has it. Blazers only need a two to tie. Roy, ten seconds left. Get no timeouts. Brandon turns inside. Up and under. Hit. No. Rebound. Sixers have it. They win. Boy, he Brandon Roy was fouled on his way to the hoop. He got fouled. Brandon Roy got bumped. Holy moly. And he was trying to create it, and he did. Watch this. He fakes here. Now watch the hit right That's there. That's the easiest oh. call in the NBA to make. Holy moly. And the fans see it right now. And that, we, I thought at the very least you get an and one situation there. Brandon Roy gets the guy off his feet. That's an automatic call in the NBA. Man, man. They miss that. Ron Elisiak, they miss you. They miss you. Maybe if you were here, you could have called that. The third yeah. official might have seen it. Because I know Callahan and Guthrie missed it completely. Oh, that's just deciding that, hey, I'm not going to help decide the outcome of a game. But Brandon Roy earned himself a trip oh, to the he line. Did. He, He's he got did. a nice job tonight. And, and the only, only two officials I understand, but that is pathetic. Yeah, he did what he had to do. He drew the foul. Blazers need a quick three. Outlaw doesn't get it, and the game is over. 